Hello, BookTube. Well, as you can see, I have a guest, my very first guest of 2024. I want a lot of guests in 2024, and I'm hoping things only go up from here. <laughs> this, is, this is Joe Spivey from the BookTube channel, Joe Spivey. And, and one thing, I will leave a link to Joe's channel, of course, but you should hurry on and subscribe because one difference between now and the last time we talk is that you're a genuine phenom. Well, yeah, the the the, the um, there's a letter after the numbers now, um, which denotes that I have uh, north of a thousand subscribers. I have north of two thousand. North subscribers. of two thousand subscribers. When there yeah. are people who've been making videos, two videos every week, year in and year out, and haven't reached a thousand. Yeah, I, I it was um, what took me three months to do to to get to a thousand subscribers from October to December was then uh, leapt across in the course of about five or six days. So it was. Um, <laughs> puzzling and yeah altogether sort of discomforting and just a bizarre thing to have i think that i think my the video that, that went really big the, the um something like 10 classics that i'm going to read this year for 2024 that has now got something obscene like 15 or 16 thousand views which is just i mean that does mean that 13 thousand or so people have looked at it and thought i probably won't subscribe to this gentleman here so <laughs> i don't really know how, quite how to read it but um i'm in a sort of double bind where i i think people love me but then some people obviously dislike me as well so it's it's all very bizarre at the moment that's the only way that it will work is if you snag the attention of the algorithm. That's usually the thing that accounts for a yeah. meteoric jump in subscribers. And usually yeah. the way to do that is with a number in the title and some sort of prescription. Five yeah. things yeah. you shouldn't do, 10 things you must do, that sort of thing. Yeah. I tried it myself once and I it, it, it definitely snags the attention of the algorithm. Mm -hmm. uh, but you have to hope that a lot of those people will stick around. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I, yeah, that would be, that would be absolutely excellent. And um, yeah, I've, I've seen, you know, an increase in numbers for all the videos and increase, increase in comments. Um, so yeah, hopefully people do hang around. And yeah, that's um, the real thing is if, if you just snag the algorithm, then, you know, that's, that's neither here nor there. But if you, <laughs> if your engagement goes up, that means people are liking what they're seeing. It's just a, it's just a cruel metric. That's all you have to do one of those videos to make that happen. And you yeah, have well, to be a big enough channel so that it notices even if you do that. If you have 200 subscribers, you can make top 10 videos all you want. The algorithm uh, is going to notice you. But as long as as long as you don't derive any self-worth from how many thousands of uh, views your videos get, it, does, it doesn't really matter. So I wasn't expecting to, you know, I wasn't expecting it to be a barnstormer and to get 15,000 views. But I just wanted it to reach a few more people than it might otherwise have done. Um, so, yeah, as I say, as long as you're not sort of, um, you know, pillaging yourself for not having got 5,000 views on one particular video, then it's 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 quite easy to regulate your emotion. <laughs> should, I should point out, I guess, for since this video is going to go up on my channel, I should point out for a long time, before a long time viewers of my own channel pointed out for me, that there is one other way to skyrocket in, in, in subscribers, but you probably don't want it. That would be to be controversial, to have oh, some controversy happen to you, to get hashtagged or canceled, yeah. or both. Yeah. <laughs> but you skirt right on the edge of that. Who knows when that might not happen? <laughs> exactly. I've said some very disreputable things in my time already. I have, you know, wronged and vilified all sorts of uh, sections of society which ought to think themselves safe. Um, so I'm sure it's only, I'm sure cancellation is only just around the bend. Well, perhaps Rishi Sunak will notice you. Your diminutive well, I, yeah, minister. Rishi Sunak would, I don't know whether he would despise me or encourage me. I don't know what he would want. He, he might want me for speech writing. He might want me for a little bit of personality training. I don't really know. But um, I'd much rather be helping Mr. Starmer right now than Mr. Sunak. I'll say that much. I can't help but think that some of Rishi Sunak's latest pronouncements and imbroglios would be higher profile on the international news stage if Israel weren't clearing the land in Gaza. <laughs> that that yeah. sort of commands the spotlight from anything else. Uh, otherwise, I'm not sure how we rank him as a prime minister. Well, I mean, I, 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 I mean against um, his sort of the, the people he's just replaced, you couldn't have done worse. <laughs> so, of course, ju by just being placed in sort of uh, temporal proxim uh, proximity with them, of course, he's going to be looked upon as a sort of safe and uh, insipid, but you just don't want somebody to gaff and to, you know, set number 10 on fire and to introduce some abusive legislation or to punch a journalist. As long as somebody just acts with a modicum of integrity, then I think at the moment we're just about ready to accept you, which is almost certainly why um, 
I think it's now, it's now received wisdom and treated as law that um, Keir Starmer is going to be sort of welcomed in with a with a um, 50, 60 seat majority in yeah, I don't think either May when the election is called or November. Yeah, this, I don't think there's any doubt of that. It's the weirdest thing yeah. in the world. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing in the world. Do you, are you of the, we don't have to, we don't have to stick with politics, but I'm wondering, sure. we're on the subject. Are you uh, under the impression that in your lifetime, you are, you are very, very young. Is that right? You're in your early 20s? Yes, that, that, that'll do. Between 20 and 25. Let's keep it relatively so, secret. Yeah. So would you, are you under the impression that in your lifetime, you have had a really good prime minister? You've had some uh, absolutely comic bad prime ministers. Of course, yeah. I mean, there. You... Boris Johnson, of course, but also Theresa May. I would rank yeah. those two up there. Well, you'd have to define good. If, if, you, if you meant, um, I don't know, benevolent, well-meaning, with the plight of the poor in their minds, at the, you know, at the foremost of their priorities, um, a decent public orator, somebody who, I don't know, uh, grabbed the wheel of power and didn't do awful, awful things... Probably not. You've got David Cameron, who is the safest of all the prime ministers, whose tenure I just about, well, I, of course I remember, but um, yeah, Cameron was sort of safe and cogent and reliable. But of course, you, then you've got the austerity measures, which have meant that, you know, bus routes have been cancelled and the NHS is in, you know, in crisis. George Osborne, who was his chancellor. So you've got Cameron, you've got May. I, I think May... Personally, from a personal perspective, or, or from somebody that you could interview, is probably the most amicable and um, you know least despicable of the lot. But as regards her treatment of Brexit negotiations and her you know genuflecting to the other side of the Leave vote, when clearly she was just trying to de deliver something that was undeliverable, um, I would have to say that no, I do not have a positive opinion of any of the prime ministers that I've had at all. I think it's a sign of the times that one of the qualifying adjectives that you used was coherent. <laughs> yeah. It's a sign of the times that that yeah. now becomes a yardstick we have to use. Are they, can they string one sentence together? <laughs> I know. Oh my. <laughs> but all right, to get, to get back to the subject of books and booktube, I'm, I, I understand completely what you say, uh, that you shouldn't put any importance by the letter after the number when it comes yeah. to subscriber count. The, the important things are all other than that. Are you enjoying it? Is it pleasing to you? Are you getting engagement from your imaginary booktube friends, et cetera, et cetera? Uh, but how does it feel anyway, even though you're not putting in, you know, any excess important on it? This, this can't be something that you expected. No, well, okay. I say I didn't derive much self-worth from it, but to say that it doesn't uh, to say that um, going on to YouTube on the 2nd and 3rd and 4th of January and seeing that since I'd last been on there, 2,000 human beings with cerebral cortices and with diaphragms and pumping hearts had actively looked at my thumbnail, clicked on it, possibly liked the video and, heaven forbid, commented something positive. To say that that didn't, you know, buzz me up or make me feel as if I must be doing something that's appealing... You know, to say that that didn't make my day a little a little happier and more glorious would be would be you know uh, mendacious and would be lying. So it feels I don't I don't know really. I haven't thought an awful lot about that, Steve. If I'm honest, uh, it it feels nice to use a um, a monosyllabic word. I don't I don't know anything much more beyond that. It feels nice. It feels yeah yeah. It just it just feels lovely. Well, beyond emotional, has it made you? And do that i hate to use the phrase it's always a sign of trouble on youtube but has it made you think about the channel <laughs> have you given any thought to i mean your concentration mostly has been canonical classics yeah do you i'm assuming that that's just an organic reflection of what you're actually mostly reading but yes, exactly. I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Um, you know, I'm not gonna veer off in any. If I do tomorrow, if I do a book about, I don't know, Lord of the Rings, I'm then not going to, and that gets a million views. I'm not going to veer off into fantasy or anything like that. I'm. I'm constant. I'm just going to be merely recording what it is I would have read if I didn't have an iPad and a YouTube channel. So I'm not going to play to the crowd. I'm not going to do any of that type of thing. I'm going to. I'm going to look at what I'm going to just record my reactions to what I read. That's essentially what I'm going to be doing. So yeah, canonical no classics. Still. Over? You, Sorry? you if you did a video on I don't know uh, 
well, Martin Amos or Christopher Hitchens. What if you did yeah. a video on those and it got 20,000 views? There'd be no seep over, no thinking, well, maybe I ought to do that again. Well, of course, but I, I quite like doing those video essays anyway. So I've done, um, I did a little while ago, a 20 minute peroration on my journey with Boris Johnson, who we've already mentioned. Um, I should like to do similar ones for, heaven forbid, I don't know, Jordan Peterson and Lance Armstrong and, you know, other nefarious characters whom I used to adore at times. Um, so, yeah, I, I enjoy doing those videos, but I'm never going to, if I, if I just do a random book haul that gets lots and lots of views, I'm then not going to use that as justification to go out and buy books every single day and just spew out four book hauls a day. So, What kind of a weirdo would you have to be to do a book haul every ex week? <laughs> exactly. I know, that would be, yeah, that would be ridiculous. That would be very excessive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember... Your 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 journey with Boris Johnson made me remember the first time that I really noticed him. He was a panelist on one of those Question Time TV yeah. shows. Uh, he was on it with Christopher Hitchens, and the subject came up of whether or not it was right to give Rushdie a knighthood. And of course, what's what was it? Anne Whitcomb who said, "Oh, yes. I, I don't think it's a good idea at all to do." <laughs> she said it was bad timing, but what she could it was clear she meant he has the wrong skin tone. <laughs> Yeah, but, did, yeah. uh, uh, Hitchens, of course, was was going to completely defend Rushdie, but mm -hmm. that I wasn't completely familiar with Boris Johnson. But I thought there's this buffoonish guy, this big hulking cartoonish guy on the panel, and then he opened his mouth and said, "Oh, I don't see why they didn't give it to Dick Francis." Right, Johnny <laughs> books. And I thought, "Oh my God!" So he doesn't just look that way; he really is a Dickensian. Yeah, yeah. Wolf. And mm -hmm. in the back of my mind, way back then, I thought. Wouldn't it be something if he became prime minister? <laughs> and then it happened. And then it happened. <laughs> well, there was there was, well, there he was might barely... still be there if not for COVID. Would you be willing to agree with that? I mean, he made all those draconian measures. You can't go to your rel your loved ones' funerals. Can't go to weddings. And then was flagrantly caught violating his own rules. If that hadn't happened, would he still be there? No, see, I think if COVID, yeah, COVID hadn't happened, of course, he had a booming majority and had got Brexit done as the uh, campaigns had it. So he had Brexit not happened, he would say, I, I can't see a reason why he wouldn't still be there and still be popular. Um, it has since come out in the uh, COVID inquiry through WhatsApp messages, which now seem to be um, the, the, the most popular method of discussing the issues of the day within the, the cabinet office rather than doing it in a more auspicious way such as i don't know talking to each other in between the hours <laughs> nine and five um it's since come out in the covid inquiry that he was very e extraordinarily reluctant to lock the country down at all and was you know of the opinion of many of the conservative right which you know referencing the magna carta and talking about all sorts of amendment rights and apparently about the you know, um, the primordial liberty of everybody else to, to, to be amongst everybody. So it seems as if Johnson was actually strong armed into doing much more draconian methods than he um, initially had planned. So I don't think it's anything to do with that. I just think if you have somebody who um, facilitates wrongdoing at such an egregious scale where you can have ministers actually being convicted of watching um, pornography in the pews of the House of Commons, then of course it's it's going to come about that perhaps there may be something a little bit and perhaps the emperor's feet are made of you know, perhaps the the the, the, the has feet of clay. Um, so I don't think it's anything to do with the the um, worldly circumstances. I think Boris Johnson was going to mess up you know six ways from Sunday either way. Um, and so it's just the inevitable conclusion that he's been ousted. Could be worse. Instead of instead of non-entities, I mean, I think we can agree that Sir Keir Starmer is a non-entity. He's very carefully cultivated himself as an entity. I'm happy for that. I'm happy to have a non-entity. Yeah. But because instead of a non-entity, you could have someone with a, a whiff of malevolence. You could have George Galloway. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I don't know if anybody ever took him seriously. I know that I know that's the sort of Hitlerian line about never taking people seriously. But I really don't think anybody ever took George Galloway seriously. But Perhaps. I felt the same way once upon a time in American yeah. politics. I no longer I know, I, I, I know, I no know. Longer, I, know I no longer things. trust the, the voting public at all. <laughs> not the slightest. But we've once again drifted out to politics. We should we should wrench this back to books. To books and to, to writing. Did you mention in a, in a comment on one of my videos that you you also are dabbling in writing? 
Yes, I've started from the 1st of January. I've done between 1,000 and 1,500 words a day in the sort of hour and a half that I, hour and a half, two hours that I have um, sort of, you know, apportioned out to be able to write. And I am, yeah, loving it. Most days it's an absolute joy. Some days you've got to sort of warm up and get yourself sort of, you know, you, you've, you've got to actively sort of dive in there. But most of the time it's been, um, yeah, absolutely excellent for me. Is it fiction? Yes, yes. Have you ever, I, and I'm, I promise I'm not angling here, <laughs> is, is, have you ever given any thought to uh, Fleet Street, to uh, pitching a book review to a venue that in, in the UK, in London, that runs book reviews? Uh, yes, I've done it. And um, their, their, their silence has, has spoken louder than words. I, 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 I've never been able to get through, um, you know, I've never been able to get my head above the parapet or anything like that, unfortunately. In your pitches, did you mention the two thousand subscribers? No, but I, I well, I haven't done so since I went on YouTube. So that was that was in ah, the days ah, okay. of undergraduate study when I had an, a few hours to my, you know, a few hours at hand. I might uh, uh, rattle off something about. I would, I would always the old canard of um, uh, 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 sort of, uh, oh God, Christ, what might we say? The focus of some of academia on, you know, what Harold Bloom called the school of resentment. That type of you know, focusing on books because of the immutable characteristics of their authors rather than the content of the, the, the books themselves. I would always sort of just smash off a thousand word piece in vengeful anger about that and send it off to an organ that I thought would be receptive to it, like uh, The Spectator or Toby Young at the Free Speech Union or somebody like that. And they would entertain it and say, it's jolly good, but we just don't have the space, yada, yada. But I've never, since getting on BookTube, I've never done a, a you know a fifteen hundred word review and sent it off to any companies or anything. So I I, I may take your advice and um, perhaps put something together for them. A book review. Yeah. Just a you'd have to you have to pick a new release, but a new release, right? Eight hundred words. Mm -hmm. Fired off to the TLS. Why not start at the top? Yeah. They mm -hmm. uh, they have a very welcoming open door policy. They don't they, they don't okay. tell you that you're wasting your time. You might be wasting your time. I don't know, but yeah. they don't yeah. tell you that. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> anyway, so the, writing fiction. Yes, I have to wonder. I have to. I mean, is this the first sustained? Uh, no, I have done. I did a, t a terrible thing. Now that I look back on, um, it's about fifty a fifty thousand word campus uh, a picaresque novel about me staring at my uh, uh, um, staring at my navel for, for 50,000 words that I uh, did sporadically between the ages of about 18 and 20, um, which is only four years ago, but I was an extraordinarily different person back then. So I have done this type of thing before, um, not with the fervor or the rapidity that I'm doing it now, but it's not it's not entirely new. So, yeah. Was that uh, done in the vein of Martin Amos or David? Yes, exactly. Martin? Yes, no, I'm on, it was a complete imitation of Martin Amos. Yeah, stuff that I wouldn't want put on my fridge now, let alone put into the public <laughs> gate. Yeah. Have you read David Lodge? No, never even heard of his name since you've just mentioned him. No, no. No. Okay. What about uh well other other I always I always, in videos with you I always end up asking because I'm just because I'm curious to know. What about for yeah. instance, Barbara Pym? Nope. Anita Bruckner? Nope. Anthony Burgess. Uh well, I'm going to say maybe, but po probably not. No, I don't think so. No. Mm. So, so a Clockwork Orange. You didn't. That wasn't. No, I haven't, no, I haven't read a Clockwork Orange. No, no. Wow. Okay. Uh, well, that's. What about J.G. Ballard? Yes, I've got a um a, a a big complete short story collection which I dip in and out of every now and then. But it it never. I've read Crash and things. It never. It, it didn't. It didn't grab me and it didn't arrest me or anything like that. No. Yeah, I, I, well, I'm glad to hear that in a way because I've often wondered if it was just a cultural difference that made. No, I read Crash and thought, I don't get this at all. But you're you're <laughs> you didn't get it either. So, so that no. doesn't work. Well. Will Self, who, uh, who we've talked of on these uh, videos before, he regards him as his literary father, or at least oh, no some, kidding. Some kind of, yeah, absolutely. Like would go around to his house for tea and scones and things like that of a Saturday morning and. Um, so, so they were really close, and I love Will Self, but but um, I I can't see any commonality between his work and Ballard's. I often wonder when you go into a new bookstore. You mentioned last time we talked that you have a new bookstore that is reachable at least. Might not yeah, be. ten minute walk away. Ten minute walk away. Yeah. Okay. When you go into a a new bookstore in the UK, do you encounter Anthony Burgess? Talking ninety published works, something like that. Do you encounter anything? Uh, 
Other it than... would probably be yeah, it would probably be on the on the big fiction section. I, I would imagine, but it's it, uh, it's it's never on. Obviously, they have bookshelves, bookcases, and shelves, and then they have special uh, tables where the you know the good books and the sparkly things and that which is probably going to you know arrest your gaze is all there. Um, but I, I'm sure it might be on there. But but um, I, I, I I don't really know to be honest. Hmm. And the uh, the larger subscriber count on BookTube. Uh, yeah. In, in addition to you know making uh, the, totally natural for that to make you feel good for a mm. bit. That I mean it's always it's it's a metric that YouTube imposes on us that your subscriber count is a measure of success. It's yeah. fraudulent, but you can't help but feel the imposition. I know, I know. You understand that. But apart from making it you feel good, has it made you feel more included in BookTube? Do you do you pay more attention to BookTube, subscribe to more channels, watch more channels? Or has that not changed? No, that's not changed at all. No, I I felt um I still felt, you know, it's it's a very welcoming community. So at five hundred and eight hundred subscribers, I felt as involved as I did now. Whether that's true or not, I'm not sure. But um yeah, I haven't I haven't increased the amount of booktube. I I'm happy with the sort of ten or thirteen that I watch now. I'm sure there are more coming all the time, but I'm happy with the ten or thirteen that I have. Ten or thirteen channels. Oh my god. <laughs> my life isn't my life isn't booktube. I have sports podcasts and channels. I have um you know all myriad of other things that i like to watch um other than other than booktube i know that might be a you know absolutely unbelievable to an anchorite like yourself steve but um yeah i watch many many other things i wondered if maybe you were being approached or the algorithm was approaching you not for books but for the virgin's emporium for for little figurines there is yeah. a very active community on youtube for yeah, those there we are. look there at that we are. Let There's yourself. a very active community. They would know everything there is to know about that figurine that you just held up. Yeah, everything um, there is to know. Yeah. They would know every book that you have behind you, every reference volume. Mm -hmm. And I can't help and and those things that I'm catching on one side of your screen are paint bottles, are they not? Which one uh, around here? Directly in front of you, not not to the side. Oh Direct yes, yes. These, bit, these, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. <laughs> there is a community on YouTube that knows that, and they would. I, I'm assuming that the algorithm has not served them up to you. <laughs> no. no, I had one or two questions when I did my Q&A uh, last week. I've got another, uh, I'm doing the second part to be released on uh, Saturday or Sunday. Uh, but but the, the, in the first part, one guy did ask me, do you do war gaming? And if so, what genre? To which I uh, made a, a really, you know, one of my usual quips about um, people who, uh, uh, you know, pl uh, play those games or, or do any of that type of thing. Uh, happened never to have fornicated with women in their lives before so I made a joke about that and uh, thankfully the gentleman replied and said that it was a, a you know it, it was it was taken in jest thankfully oh my god tabletop figurine wargaming yeah I know if you gestured in that direction you would have 60,000 subscribers overnight mm -hmm. the only problem is it would be those 60,000 people <laughs> yeah <laughs> Although, am I, uh, I'm sorry to change the subject, but was that the water bottle that I spotted? Well, this is a very, this is, I'm at my I'm at, uh, Grand Viceroy's Fiveys now instead of my wealthy heiresses across the city. So I'm at Dad's. Um, so it's a, it's a much smaller one. It's a diddy little minion thing here. There you are. Beige colored. It's keeping me nice and warm. It's it's three degrees here, Stephen. You know, uh, um, anthropogenic climate change seems not to have bitten its claws yet. It's still this is proper winter that we were having at the moment. And I think a cold spat's coming to, to take us into sub-zero attempts soon, so. Well, but uh, keep in mind, anthropogenic climate change is just that. It's no longer styled anthropogenic warming. Mm. It's, is the climate off balance? Is, is it out of whack? Uh, I, although I'm in no position to complain, the rest of the United States is also suffering just giblet freezing cold except for my little my little bubble my little yeah. bubble is not suffering that at all not that it would matter what was that is, is boston not famous for getting 14 feet of snow uh, especially compared to everywhere else in the in the u.s apart well, from sort of minnesota and stuff well yeah, the other extreme northern states but our our position right there on the a, a warming current in the in the yeah. Atlantic, ordinarily but not in a long long time not a long, long time. I pulled out an old MacBook from 10 or 15, 10 or 12 years ago. And I was looking through the photos that were on it. And there were photos of 
an unbelievable apocalyptic winter that we had in I think 2013 2014 something like that mm -hmm. apocalyptic mm -hmm. just unbelievable and now it seems like something out of fiction we will not be getting snow anymore this year I doubt that Boston will be getting snow anymore full stop uh, yeah we don't we don't get any I, I I can remember one winter when I was about seven or eight where I was snowed in and and was prevented from going to school because of the the depth of the snow outside of our doors and on our roads but that was once 10 years 10 you know 10 12 13 years ago and it we get one flurry in November, one flurry in January, February, and that's that's about it nowadays. We don't get anything like what we used to. I don't think. When getting getting back to BookTube, yes, of course, yes. <laughs> does do the ten or twelve channels that you watch? Do they ever affect your reading? Are you fairly ironclad in what you want to read next? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm happy to 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 listen to other people's perspectives on a book, but um, I don't think I've ever been induced to read. Apart from the occasional, you know, when you do something obscene, like a hundred nonfiction recommendations, I, that's just absolutely ungodly. But anyway, uh, apart from that, I don't think I've ever been induced to read something by by uh, a YouTuber that I've watched. I don't I don't think so. Th there will be an occasion, but it's never it's not something where I'm sat there with a notepad waiting for the six or seven books that they're looking at um, so that I can go out and read them. What about the big booktube events? No. Well, yeah. March Mystery Madness. For yeah. Are you, mm -hmm. are you, might you read a mystery novel? Well, I've got um, Dan, uh, this very house. We, he's got um, purely ornamentally. He's got about maybe 30, 35 Agatha Christie's lined up. So I could easily dip in and out of, you know, four or five of those in March. So and um, uh, 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 Mark at a book time with Elvis and Randy Ray are doing something to do with Sherlock Holmes in February, aren't they as well? Yes. Yes. There are, there are a couple of booktube events coming up with pun worthy titles. That, <laughs> yeah. Holmes is where the heart is. <laughs> yeah, Holmes is where the heart is. Is the name of that event? <laughs> yeah, I, I I imagine that took uh, between fifteen and eighteen seconds to come up with. <laughs> I I know this will be hard to believe, but I was not involved in that name. Let <laughs> <laughs> me stress that. Although Agatha Christie, sure, is one thing, but I would think you would read Dorothy Sayers. I would think you would read the Lord Peter Whimsey novel since you've gone to the bother of starring in them. <laughs> Well, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. But take an example. Like, well, we can use March of Mystery Madness because it's right around the corner, and Holmes is where the heart is. Is right around the corner as well. There's also June on the range and Garb August in the summer. Mm -hmm. Let's say there was a booktube event like uh, March Mystery Madness. To get getting back to your, I'm just in, I'm in fat, indefatigably curious about people's in situ book world if you took it into your head to get some murder mysteries some paperback murder mysteries how easy would that be on a typical book shopping expedition not necessarily the new place but secondhand places as well if you didn't want to use the internet how easy would it be for you to do that oh that they're, 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 they're pretty widely available yet yeah, some uh charity shops even go to the effort to, to handily point out the the, the taxonomize the, the category differences um there's always one stand of regency romances pretty much there's always one there's one at least some sort of weird agglomeration of, of westerns um so that you know with you know cowboys with lassoes and things so there are um yeah there, there are there are groups together and things so if you gave you know if you gave me the, the task of going out and getting a western a thriller a murder mystery and you know a sex and shopping novel tomorrow all four of them, I, I could easily come back with them. Yeah, I, I would be, I would be certain of that fact. Yeah, without being out of pocket, much money. Oh yeah, with, with a five pound note. Yes, yeah. That's wonderful. It's mm. it's not uh, it's your your general geographic area is mostly in my mind now because I've been in the last week. I've been reading quite a bit about the Reformation. Yes. And your geographical area just they didn't consider it a full day from morning till sunset if they didn't burn some people in the town square so, the harrying <laughs> of the north and all this type of thing yeah every you, little town every uh, big town you yeah. that's where you go to get burnt at the stake <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. i'm assuming that it's more laid back these days Oh, I don't know. There's still some cantankery lying about, but um, yeah, it's nothing, nothing like that these days. Only when we get a bad football or rugby result is there any burnings, public burnings nowadays. So, have you noticed you you had that that jump in subscribers? Your mm -hmm. your Lord Byron moment. You woke up and found that you were famous. Yes, exactly. <laughs> With, 
have you noticed the increase in subscribers is healthier, even though it's not jumping? It's still happening faster? Yes, yes. I'm still looking uh, every couple of days and there are 200 more subscribers there or whatever, which would have taken me a fortnight beforehand and now it's taking two days. So it's more sort of technological advance, I imagine. What was what, what yesterday took three minutes is now taking, you know, 30 seconds or whatever. So it's, um, yeah, it is. It's cantering and galloping along, um, which is both scary and enticing. So who knows? So you need to speed up your... Q and A before you have to do another one. <laughs> well, this is it. Yeah, I got um, thirty-five questions and did seventeen answers last week, and we'll be doing seventeen answers this week. Um, each of which will be half an hour. Each video, which will be half an hour uh, long. So, yeah, I need to. Well, I, I'm probably going to have. I'm going to have to wait, aren't I, Steve? I'm, I can't do every thousand or whatever. Otherwise, it will be every every fortnight or whatever at this bloody rate. <laughs> well, you seem to be getting good questions. Of course, yeah, yeah. We can, you can always rely on the community for that. Absolutely, yeah. I have a, a bunch of new people watching my own channel. And I From where do you think? Out, I, put up, I have to put up periodic reminders to people not to ask me, have you read questions? Please don't do that. I got a monstrous one. For, fortunately, it's private. It was in the email, but it was a monstrous one. I, mm -hmm. actually, I actually reprimanded the person almost. I was pretty stern. I'm usually very friendly in my email. But I was pretty have you stern. read Have you read Daniel Deronda or something well, like that? It was almost equivalent. I said, you know, yes. you, you've watched my channel. I've been assiduously reading books since your grandparents were children. <laughs> Do you think <laughs> I would have missed this? Do you honestly think yeah. I would have missed this? I know. <laughs> but it's, it comes from the right place. It's done from the heart. Mm -hmm. oh, I do. I do have to ask Steve very, very quick. I don't know how quite how close we are to the end of this video. Um, it, it's my understanding that Bill Belichick uh, resigned as the, or was was uh, moved aside, perhaps as the um, head coach of the New England Patriots. Have there been burnings or riots or any sort of public dismay because nope. of that, or is he jolly happy because of it? No, nope. I don't know if there are any people spinning that story as that he resigned he certainly did not he got fired he was going to stay <laughs> yeah. there for the rest of his life i'm amazed i mean once upon a time that would have been impossible it would have been yeah. absolutely unthinkable because belichick was combined with tom brady yes yeah I, i'm well aware of that. Quarterback in the history of the game for years and years and years yeah. they were a pair so yeah. even if the the patriots lost the super bowl belichick couldn't go the typical the typical hecatomb that you offer to the football gods if you lose badly in a season is you get rid of the coach Yes, yeah. And Belichick was immune to that. And I guess mm -hmm. I kind of thought that even though Brady is gone, he would still be immune, but he's not. <laughs> no. You get rid of the coach. You start, you're doing something wrong if, if, mm -hmm. uh, if that's the case. He was protected as much as he protected anybody else. He was but it was, it, was nice to, it was nice to pass that age old question out there, wasn't it? Of whether it was um, Brady's on field brilliance or Belichick's uh, tactical brilliance, because as soon as Brady trotted off to Tampa Bay, he went and won another bloody Super Bowl. Yeah, no, there Belichick... was never any in Boston. There was or in the parking lot of Dunkin' Donuts. There was never any doubt where the source of so? right, okay. was. All you okay. had to do was watch a Super Bowl where the Patriots are getting the stuffing pounding out of them, and you yeah. could just sit back in a tavern in Lemonster or a, a, a bar yeah. in Bavia. You could sit back and say, it doesn't matter how bad it looks right now, because at the end, Brady is going to do something almost supernatural in the snow, mm -hmm. in the sleet, mm -hmm. with no yeah. visibility. He's going to do something almost supernatural. And it's not going to have anything to do with Bill Belichick. Belichick yeah, is going yeah. to be on the sidelines. He's going to be in barely any communication. With I, have, I have unbelievable memories of the, was it 2016 Super Bowl against the uh, Atlanta Falcons or whatever? There were so many points down and Brady just comes back fourth quarter and 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 and, and, um, and composes four game winning drives just and there was no desperation no hurry no. it looked like he'd no. been planning to do that for months it looked like yeah. he was just docking a worksheet <laughs> and also that weird paradox he's the most ungainly sort of it's it's as if somebody's put a helmet on a sort of shire horse um, he can't <laughs> run to, he can't run to save his life and yet no. when he throws the ball he can just he can throw it within a nanometer from 400 yards away something ridiculous yeah. like that he, no he, he, was, he was and is unbelievable no there was no there was no doubt that he would just take his super bowl wins with him <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. so yes bill belichick is gone we have a we have a, a raucous leadership all the cultural figures in new england the mayor is doing nothing right 
She's being revealed as a DEI hire, basically a DEI hire. The okay. president of Harvard, ousted from her job as president, everyone in the news doing exactly what they're supposed to do, talking about plagiarism, instead of talking about why she had the yeah. job in the first place with fewer yeah. professional publications than I have. Why did she yeah. have the job in the first place? Yeah. No one's talking about that. And why? Because they don't want to lose their own jobs. Mm-hmm. And the fact one, that she I'm preaching to the choir here, but the sooner this stuff is gone, the better. Yeah. If if it's if it's causing people to intentionally censor themselves, I, what is the root problem with Claudine Gay? Well, I know what it is, but I can't say what it is, or I'll lose my job. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So we're all in upheaval. I'm glad that the that the unofficial crown of New England is still resting squarely on my own head. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, about all these these temporary comers and goers. <laughs> uh, but I don't think our mayor is going to survive her next election. Oh dear. I don't think she's she is very popular. I'm pretty sure that she's that she'll be gone. But we need to wrap this up. We have to do it in a gentlemanlike fashion rather than get cut off in mid sentence. <laughs> so <laughs> want, I want to thank you. Uh, I'll leave a link. Everybody, go subscribe if you haven't. Let's get Joe Spivey over five thousand subscribers. Thank right. you for having me on, Steve. Uh, we'll talk again. Yes, of course. Yeah. Yes, we'll we'll do it for three thousand. <laughs> all right. So we'll wrap this up for now. I'll see you all soon. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Wartube. <laughs>